King Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Start the game, straight five defense, first possession with their man or zone, running double George, okay? Come out, execute. And guys, I talk to you all the time about opportunities. Make sure you're ready, make sure you're prepared when opportunities present themselves to you during the course of your life, okay? Tonight, this is your time. This is your moment, and this is your opportunity. Hey, let's go. go take let's it! Go! The spirited intonations of Western Kentucky head coach Ray Harper. Welcome, everyone, to Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Tonight, from Summit Arena in Hot Springs, Arkansas, it's the Sun Belt Conference Championship with FIU taking on Western Kentucky. Hey, FIU led from wire to wire, upsetting number one seed, Middle Tennessee. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky got a late bucket from T.J. Price to rally past Arkansas State, and that is how we got to the final. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, courtside, along with Mark Adams. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the third meeting of the season between these two teams. But, Coach, in the big picture, the 17-game winning streak of the Blue Raiders from Middle Tennessee snapped last night by FIU. We've got a couple of party crashers here right now. Stealing a bit tonight is Middle Tennessee State, as you mentioned, 28 victories, 17 in a row at one point, and the second best road record in the country. What does that mean? I think they're in, which means whoever wins tonight steals a bit from somebody watching out there right now, a team on the bubble. And when you look at FIU and Western Kentucky, two of the more improbable, compelling stories in college basketball as part of our one-on-one. -on -one. Improbable indeed. Western Kentucky trying to be the first team in 17 years to win four games in four days for two consecutive seasons in a conference championship. And Florida International, their first championship game in 15 Sun Belt Conference seasons with only three returning players Richard Patino, yeah, Richard Patino <laughs> has changed the culture at FIU. And let's take a look at the starting lineups. The Hilltoppers have used 16 different starting lineups this year. Dickerson, Crook, Price, Van, and Rostov in the starting lineup up front. Hill, Smith, Frank, Tymel Murphy, the team's leading scorer for the Golden Panthers, and Yurkovic at the center position for FIU. And we are set and ready to get underway here. A look at our officiating crew, Western Kentucky in the red, controlling the tip. Rook out front, guarded by Hill. Watch for Western Kentucky early to look low to number 44, George Fant. There's Price out to Fant. Puts it on the deck pretty well as well over Yurkovic. Rostov in front with the putback. George Fant got off to a rough start last night. They wanted to feed him early off the miss, but Rostov on the offensive glass. Hilltoppers on the board. Toppers with a hard-fought victory last night against Arkansas State. Here's Hill out top. Hill fouled by Jamal Crook. Richard Pitino, meanwhile, in his first season on the sidelines for FIU. Boy, you talk about a turnaround in how they do things there. He has done a spectacular job. He is the son, of course, of Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino was also 30 years old at the time that he led BU to the NCAA tournament, which seems like an eternity ago now, Coach. Yeah, a long, long time ago. <laughs> you know, they asked Richard Pitino if he thought his dad should come down and watch his team play this evening and said, he should come down. I've been to all his big games. <laughs> Sometimes as an employee, off the miss. Nice hit ahead. And Fant finishes and won off the great dime from Price. And the Hilltoppers with a chance to go up five on the free throw. I talked to George Fant before the game, and he was determined to get off to a good start. How do you do that? You outrun everybody. I love big guys that sprint the floor. Fant, the team's second leading scorer, 13 points a game. Just a 60% free throw shooter, but he knocks that one down, and the Hilltoppers lead 5 to nothing here early. It's really the size and strength of Western Kentucky in the red jerseys versus the overall athleticism and quickness of this FIU basketball team. There's quick on quick right there. Hill running the nice two-man game, and Yurkovic with the easy layup. Boy, you have to be impressed with the play of Derek Hill, the five foot nine inch sophomore, a walk-on point guard 
that made the biggest buck of the game last night in that FIU win against Middle Tennessee. He is a tough kid, especially as a walk-on. You just don't see many guys at this level walk on and make such an impact that Derrick Hill has for FIU. He's a winner. Osell kicks it out to Crook. There's Fan posting up on the block. Ten on the shot clock. Price launching. And rebounded by the Panthers. Murphy with the pull up way short. And couldn't get his own rebound. Time on Murphy, their leading scorer. Missing his first jack. Here's Crook in transition. And Western Kentucky out to a 7-2 lead. When they play like that and get quick hit-aheads and buckets, we've seen a couple transition baskets already. Is that the pace they want to play at? Whose pace is that favor? Especially with Jamal Crook. The faster the game, the more positive for his game and for the Hilltoppers. He was out 11 games by injury this season, Mark, and he now is completely healthy. What an addition to this ball club. Yeah, this Western Kentucky team got off to an 8 and 2 start before being beset by injuries. Rostov with a nice layup off the feed from Fenn, and Richard Patina calls timeout. The Hilltoppers out of the gate quickly here on offense. They've got the lead when we come back. Why does regional manager... Coach Harper has to be happy with the way that his team coaches uh, moving the ball on offense as we go inside the play. This team, when they're hitting on all cylinders, it's the extra pass that makes them good. And the high-low. This team loves playing high-low basketball right there. A direct pass. Defensive right. breakdown by FIU. Frank on his way to the bucket. Impeded and blocked. Come the Hilltoppers. Floater in the lane, a little bit strong by Crook. And rebounded by Yurkovic. Well, but think about every shot now for Western Kentucky has been in the paint, either off the dribble or off the pass. Bell making his own shot. Took out his do-it-yourself kit and gets the bucket. Cameron Bell, very flexible player, can play the one through four positions in this undersized lineup. He had a big night last night in that upset win against Middle Tennessee State, 15 points and four rebounds. Yerkovic almost had the steal, but he caused the over and back violation. Hilltopper turnover. What a job Ray Harper has done at Western Kentucky. Last year, led the Hilltoppers to the championship game and won it. An improbable run as they only won 11 games during the regular season, but he resurrected the team as the interim coach, then became the head coach. He's won four national titles, two at the NAI level and two at the Division II level. Dude can coach. Trying to go back to back here. With four consecutive wins in four days. Bell pulled up, was fouled on the play by T.J. Price. That's going to be his first personal foul. T.J. Price, the 6'4 sophomore out of Slidell, Louisiana. Just now getting healthy, and boy, when he's healthy, he's a big key in what they do. Western Kentucky, 4 of 7 from the field to begin this game. Smith launching, and Malik Smith with the splashdown three. He's one of those guys that when he gets it going, he scores in bunches. He'll take a bad shot or two, but Richard Patino just kind of lives with it because the kid can knock down shots and say, no, 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 good shot. That's the kind of way he rolls. Down to a two-point game. Here's Bryce. Whistle, and that's going to be an offensive foul against Okaro Akamene. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Back with more on the other side. Here's a look at the draw of the 2013 Big East Men's Basketball Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. One of the more uh, compelling conference tournaments across the college basketball landscape. How about Tough Pitt? to pick winners in those, man. <laughs> How about Pitt last year really kind of fell off the map a little bit with Jamie Dixon. Man, did they rebound yeah. Back here, FIU with possession, down by two. Panthers were picked to finish 10th out of 11 teams this year in the Sun Belt. Nice cut by Bell and a nice feed to Frank for the slam, and we're knotted at nine. If you can't guard the dribble against FIU, you're going to get burned just like that. Derek Hill 
their point guard puts a lot of pressure on the opponent's point guard getting the ball up the floor and another nice defensive play in the half court. Here comes Malik Smith. Number one in white, Derek Hill. He puts a lot of pressure on the second guard as well because he draws everybody to him. And Smith throws in the floater and FIU has the lead. And if some of this full court pressure looks a little bit familiar, you might be a Louisville fan. Yeah. Like father, like son, they turn over Western Kentucky. Rostov threw it away. They like to speed you up. There's a look at uh, dad, Rick Patino. Uh, he also was 30 years old when he took BU to the NCAA tournament before leaving for the New York Knicks. And Richard Patino uh, worked for several high level coaches other than dad, of course, Tim Welsh, Ron Everhart, Billy Donovan of Florida. 14 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Panthers with a two point lead. Richard now playing for his first conference championship as a coach at 30 years old. And if you recall, Rick Patino at 30 years old led Boston yeah. University to the NCAA tournament. Here's Bell. Nice drive and kick to Frank. This is the FIU offense. They like to put the ball down the floor, shoulder slant, get by. There's Hill. Hill proficient in the two man game. Missed the scoop shot and rebounded by the Hilltoppers looking for the push. Good look by Jamal Crook right there. Inside to Fan who missed from point blank range. Murphy's been kind of quiet so far offensively, Coach. How important that they get him off here? You know, he's one of those guys that when Smith gets going, when Hill gets into the paint, Murphy's got to be a guy that can score as well. Nice dime inside. Great feed by Hill to Frink, and Frink will go to the free throw line for a pair. I mean, Hill just gets into gaps. It's, it's constantly open, <laughs> it seems like. Whenever he has the basketball in his hands, he just gets by people. A walk on with that kind of quickness and quarterback skills. Combinate with the foul for Western Frank. Kentucky. Frink at the free throw line, a 60% foul shooter on the season, had six points and nine rebounds in that upset win against. Middle Tennessee yesterday and uh, you know we talked about Middle Tennessee at the top of the show a little bit an RPI of 29 top 100 RPI wins against Ole Miss and UCF non-conference strength of schedule at nine I, I'd say they're still in the tournament right now uh, I believe so too they've, they've gone on the road they've played good people they won 28 games this season very very deep team goes 10 deep exciting brand of basketball now we see the full court pressure again from FIU. You know, even though that FIU is not a real deep team, they will still come at you. They will grind in that full court pressure all night long. They'll switch up defenses from man to man in zone. Yeah, they only go about eight deep, and for a team that pressures you that much, you'd expect a few more bodies being utilized. Fant inside with a nice jump hook over the left shoulder. That's what he likes best. We talked to him before the game, and he told me that he doesn't mind turning over either shoulder, but you know what? He loves going over that left shoulder. It's third team all conference. Crook in transition, blocked on the play by Bell. Whistling a foul called against the Panthers. As Malik Smith gets set to check back into the ball game. Jamal Cook just jumps the route right there. Takes right the basket. Brandon Harris just follows up. I like guys that come off the bench and they give you a hustle play right away. And that's what Brandon Harris did. Hilltopper ball underneath. FIU in a little zone here, Coach. We saw that give... Middle Tennessee some difficulty at times yesterday. Why is that? Well, because it's always switching up. You never know what defense they're going to be in each time, so your point guard has to read it and then get your offense set. Bell from deep, an ill-advised shot. Fant with the rebound. It's good defensive transition by FIU. Two-man game with Crook and Rostov. Not sure whether that was a pass or a shot. It was bad either way. <laughs> Here's Murphy. Murphy still without a bucket in the ball game. Their leading score. 
But here's the bad news. Murphy hasn't scored. Here's the good news. FIU's up two. And a deep three by Malik Smith. And he posed for a picture afterwards with the follow through. Why not? Eight points so far in the game. Knocking down a couple of threes. And a 14 to 2 run for the Panthers has them leading by five when we come back. Malik Smith with a deep three giving FIU a five point lead. Hey, a guy that wears number 24, his favorite player, Kobe Bryant, he launches like Kobe, too. He really does. He's got the shortest memory in college <laughs> basketball. He can throw up an air ball and then just rip court it the next time. And they get another turnover out of the full court pressure. Coming up after the break, an update on the SOCON. Davidson in action in that one from the studio. Chris Cotter in our ESPN College Basketball Studios over on the Deuce. Davidson in the College of Charleston Southern Conference Championship. Tom Droney hitting the three there, and it's a seven-point lead right now for Davidson. Meanwhile, James Madison all over Northeastern, 20-5 to five in the Colonial. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, guys. Boy, Bob McKillop continues to do a great job at Davidson, 17-1. In conference play this year, there's a look at their resume. Right now, the story Malik Smith with a couple of three balls has FIU in a five point lead. From a player at Jacksonville College, and before that, South Plains College, which last year were the National Junior College champions. Now, FIU comes out hard man to man, really pressure now on the perimeter. Dickerson on the drive, cut off on the baseline. Good defense. Yeah, I like their footwork on the perimeter. They really take away the dribble. And Fent walked with it. Another hilltopper turnover. That's the fifth one of the game here. We haven't even gotten to the midway point coach of the first half. One of the hallmarks of a Patino coach team, whether it be Rick or Richard, is that you are in a stance defensively and you are moving your feet constantly. And we see that out of this FIU basketball team. This is the third meeting of the season between these two teams. Smith again, this time coming up short, but rebounded by the Panthers. Western Kentucky showing some selling here. Long jumper, no good. By Okomalafe. Western Kentucky with some cold shooting. Kaspar missing that time. Back comes Smith. Western Kentucky seems tight. Jumper good by Cameron Bell, who had a 15-point game last night. And FIU leading by eight. Western Kentucky, one of the most experienced teams in the country. And that's the guy that has to get off, you would think, right, yeah, Coach? T.J. Price, the guy that can take up dribble. He scored 23 in the NCAA tournament last season against Kentucky. Yeah, that Kentucky. <laughs> He's pretty good. And a steal by Price. Whistle, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Against FIU, that'll go against Cameron Bell. T.J. Price, a great story and good hustle here. And education and anticipation with the steal. Now, T.J. Price, strong enough, quick enough, skilled enough to be a guy that can drop 25 on you real fast. Second team all Sun Belt Conference this past season. He was signed a couple of years ago in the late signing period in April because on cue, Price, uh, they thought that he was going to choose to play football. He was recruited by a bunch of big-time football programs. Pretty good bargain, Coach. Yeah, as a defensive end, the rising star in the football ranks, but wanted to play basketball. You can't assume anything in recruiting. You've got to <laughs> ask the question. Goes? Son, do you want to play basketball or football? It's a pretty simple <laughs> question, but a lot of people seem to miss that one. Whistling a timeout as Timel Murphy got tied up on the baseline. FIU with four timeouts timeout. remaining. Well, folks, championship week on ESPN rolls on Tuesday night with a double dip at seven. The winner of the Louisville Notre Dame semifinal will square off against Syracuse UConn winner in the Big East Women's Championship game. Then at nine, Wright State meets Valparaiso in the Men's Horizon League Championship game. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, Tuesday on ESPN and also live 
on watch ESPN. And what about Brokoff, that big shot that he hit for Valparaiso? That was that as game good, a couple of nights ago. That was as good of a semifinals as you're ever going to see Valpo beat Green Bay 70 67. And then, of course, Wright State knocked off Detroit, Ray McCallum's bunch. When Miles Dixon hit a shot from behind the backboard, basically, to win that game for Billy Donald, who's coach of the year in the Horizon League at Wright State. There's Derek Hill out front. And Hill had knocked away. You know, even on turnovers, FIU is getting back so well. They've been very stingy in their half court defense. Rostov with a nice left handed hook shot of. Over the right shoulder. Rostov, the big Latvian. Big guys always develop late. You see it in the NBA and you see it in college, and this kid is coming on late. He needs to get better. Murphy missing from deep. Smith with a contested three. Murphy with the putback. He misses. And here come the Hilltoppers. Chance to cut it down to two. Price. And it's a two-point game. C.J. Price was injured earlier this season, had a knee and an ankle injury, and just now in the last half dozen or so games, rounding back into premium shape and form. Well, that was a long first step into the basket. He just exploded. Murphy still hasn't gotten on the scoreboard for FIU. Out front, a foul against the Hilltoppers. That's going to go against Caden Dickerson, his first personal foul. Don't forget, coming up next, St. Mary's against Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference Championship game. Gonzaga, the number one team in the country, and St. Mary's trying to knock them off. Looks like a two bid league. Of course, Gonzaga, number one seed, and Matthew Della Vadova knocking off Creighton during Bracket Buster weekend. I think that may have sealed their fate along with getting to the championship game in the West Coast Conference. Delano Dill was so good. I love watching him play. Hill with the floater. Just a little bit off the mark. Now the Hilltoppers with a chance to tie it up. Price feeling it. Little heat check. Hot! And they've got the lead on the three ball by T.J. Price. There's times when he just seeks and finds his shot. Western Kentucky back in the zone again. Frank with the three. On the blow by. Finds Crook. Got it. And Western Kentucky extending the lead to three. Coach, when they get into that early offense, they seem to be more successful. Jamal Crook loves it. T.J. Price loves it. We saw George Fant's ability to run the floor. That's when Western Kentucky is at their most dangerous offensively. And they get another deflection and a steal, but a foul called. That's going to go against Cameron Bell. But T.J. Price starting to percolate a little bit. He's averaged 20 over the last five games. T.J. Price, you're right. Chris Cotter in studio over on the U tonight. We've got Big East women's tournament action. And Skylar Diggins here with the steal. Eventually gets up to Natalie Chunwa for the layup. And Notre Dame is all over Louisville right now. UConn-Syracuse later tonight. Championship game tomorrow on ESPN, Mark. All right, Chris. Back here in Heart Springs, Arkansas. ESPN Champions Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Rick Pitino, head coach of the... Louisville Cardinals in attendance watching his son Richard Patino. Was his granddaughter Ava came up to say hi to Grandpa. What a show coach. Well, we, we are owned by Disney. It's a family network. <laughs> family affair here today. What a year for FIU. Only seven winning seasons in the last 32 years. Price going to work, but he traveled with it inside. And you know, they haven't had FIU. It's the first time they've been over 500 since 2000 when Shaky Rodriguez was the head coach down there in South Florida. About 13 years is a long time to go sub 500. Hilltoppers coach in his zone here. Murphy on the drive, fouled and one. Count it. 
Timel Murphy will go to the free throw line, try and complete the three point play. We're going to get the dead area of the zone, right there in that high post area at the free throw line, and then he squares. You know, when you got a big guy in the middle, and of course, he's a tweener, but he's a big guy for this lineup. And you catch square and have perimeter skills like that, that's why he scores the ball. First team all Sun Belt Conference this year, averaging a little over 15 points a game on the season. Point ball game. Fent trying to post up on the block, whistling a foul call. Fent really did a nice job, coach, of making himself big and available. Now against a smaller lineup for FIU, you just want to pound it inside, and that's exactly what Western Kentucky sees, and that's what they're going to do. Now, Rostov, in particular, has had a little success here in the first half, and he's not a guy that does a lot of scoring for them usually. He side out of bounds, Western Kentucky basketball. Bill Topper started off the season eight and two before running into a rash of injuries. But then as their guys got healthy again, in particular Jamal Crook and TJ Price, they started to find their mojo again. Crook on the spin. Fent with the mid-range. Crook battling. Rostov. Missing from point blank range. It looked like he almost got fooled by the pass. Smith. Price was running the floor, but it was picked off. Strong move by Fant, but he couldn't convert. Murphy on the move. Scoops it home. Wow. Timel Murphy now with four. Not much happened, but it sure was exciting. Yeah. That might get him going a little bit. Harris on the wing, a little two-man game with Rostov. On FIU back in the man-to-man, -man. constant switch, it just keeps you guessing. Brook with the stare down three, comes up about two feet short. Out of bounds, it'll be FIU basketball. And Jamal Crook is really struggling with his shot. He's a guy that went through some injuries this season, lower leg injury, and he's just kind of rounding into form, and it really shows tonight. He's struggling with his jump shot. Right, three points, and four rebounds last night in that comeback win against Arkansas State. Two of five today. He had a fractured foot which kept him out for 11 games and he still doesn't have that explosiveness that he had before the injury. Hill with a nice dime and a good block by Fent. Orcher Jimenez couldn't get free. Price on the drive, took the hit. And one. Oh, they call a charge. Let's see what the call is. Might have had conflicting calls. And now they're going to call a charge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like the baseline official was going to come up and call the block, but he hesitated. And then the out official called the charge. That's the second foul against TJ Price. And he's going to take a seat on the bench. How does that affect Western Kentucky with Price on the bench? How do they compensate for that? Well, they just lost their best player and top scorer right there. So George Fant has to step up. Dickerson, a guy that really has struggled shooting the basketball because of shoulder injuries. There's Fant right there. Jorge Jimenez off the mark and rebounded by the Hilltoppers. FIU switching it up, uh, showing a little zone here. Dickerson didn't even look at the bucket that time. Kaspar back out to Dickerson. This time he does, and he knocks it down. His shoulders have gotten progressively better. He had a tough time just raising his arms above his head earlier this season, but there you see now he's starting to get some confidence and starting to get his stroke back. Now, last year he missed a good portion of the season with a left shoulder injury. This year, when he got healthy, he injured his right shoulder. Whistle and Porcher steps out of bounds. Coach 25 23 with 419 to go in the first half. Is this a higher scoring game than you would have thought it would be at this point? Or is it about really. right? No. Yeah, we're, we're settling in right around that 60 65 point pace because FIU, they want to force pace. 
Western Kentucky, as we saw yesterday, they can win a chess match now. Boy, look at Hill with those active hands, knocked it out of bounds. Hill started getting playing time late last season under the prior regime led by head coach Isaiah Thomas and got the starting job this year and has been a fantastic leader. Next year, of course, the Panthers have some very prolific and prominent transfers coming into the guard position. This is Harris with the three ball. Harris, Dickerson, Caspar, those are three guys that can all load it up. They can make shots, and especially with T.J. Price on the bench, those guys have responded well. There's Murphy, thought about it. Hill doesn't. Rattles halfway down and out, and that was a man's rebound by Fant. Caspar in transition, the three. Harris with the rebound, they'll get another set. Under three and a half minutes to go, they lead by five. Harris played more minutes with the injury to Jamal Crook. He just kept getting better and better, and he's such a lively kid. He just plays so hard. Fant put it on the deck and drew the foul. And the Hilltopper is starting to find the range from down deep. Not only Dickerson, but Harris as well. Back with more on the other side. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report just around the corner. Coach Greenberg is here in studio. We'll take a look at the aftermath of the aftermath. Tom Green apologizes for his postgame rant last night in the West Coast Conference Finals later tonight on ESPN. Once again, it's Gonzaga and St. Mary's. A preview on the way. For now, it's back to Hot Springs. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. And there's a look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology. How he's got the number one seeds broken down so far. Coach, uh, you agree, disagree anywhere in particular? Well, Gonzaga, I felt like they were the number one team in the country a month ago, led by Kelly Olenek, who I think is a very special talent. Louisville, obviously, Rick Patino. There's no way I'm saying anything against them tonight. Right. <laughs> Five-point lead. The Suns team trailing right now. Dickerson trying to inbound it, and that's a five-second violation. Boy, coming out of a timeout, how disappointing is that? Well, you know what? It's good preparation, but it's also the third time these teams have played. Mm. I know a lot of coaches that change up their out-of-bounds schemes going into post-play because bottom line is you've seen every out-of-bounds play your opponent has run over the last two months. We saw last night how tough it is defeating a team three times in a season when Middle Tennessee lost to FIU after beating them twice previously. The best thing about this zone for Western Kentucky has been they haven't been able to get in the gaps. It's important for the jump shot right there. Before, that was a layup against the man-to-man. -man. And Murphy active on the glass, gets another bucket, his third field goal. He's got six to lead down to three. And that's the worst thing about the zone. Rebound Blocking off on the back side. That's going to be a push-off against Kaspar. Think about earlier in the game, Derek Hill would have stepped right in there and laid it up. In this case, nobody blocks off. Murphy just gets a wide open lane to the basket. Easy to. Chance to cut it to one now. Murphy scored the last six points for FIU. Murphy played for South Plains College, the National Junior College Champions last year, went undefeated. Lee Smith has been quiet for the last few minutes. Murphy, good hustle for the rebound. Frank missed from point blank range, but Hill gets them another possession. Back sideboards again. Guards have to drop and block off. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Hill Toppers leading by three. When the shot goes up from an opposite wing, top guard has to drop all the way down. That'd be Crook in this case. He would have to drop on the backside and block off. Watch where the shot comes from. The offside guard has to block off. He'll turn the corner, made a great pass. Tipped out of bounds, though. It'll be Panther basketball with nine seconds left on the shot clock. Boy, Murphy tried the old okie doke move off the opponent's backside. Didn't work. Not the way they drew it up, but Smith got to the basket, whistle, and a foul going to be called against FIU. And Yurkovic's palm skyward, wondering, who, me? 
That's going to be his second personal foul. Edwards with their full court pressure. Harris on the drive. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Brook at the point. Watch for Dickerson, number 10 in red. Watch for Fant inside. There it is. Nice duck in and a foul called against FIU. Good patience that time by the Hilltoppers, and that sends Fant to the free throw line for free throws. Fant at the free throw line, a 60% foul shooter. He's the cousin of. Jim McDaniels, who is the school's all-time leading scorer, and that's the reason why he wears that number 44 jersey. And McDaniels from 69 to 71, a three-time All-American, led Western Kentucky to the Final Four in 1971. The all-time leading scorer, 2,200 points for Jim McDaniels. Great player. Big guy, great hands, ran the floor well. I'm guessing 71, is that, is that the Clem Haskins? Uh, was, was that his era back there? Or? Am I off a little bit of my historical timeline? I probably am. The games run together, Coach, after a while. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Murphy inside. And Murphy starting to make a move offensively. Under a minute to go, and it's a one-point game. This is where Ray Harper likes to go to T.J. Price, but T.J. Price on the bench with foul trouble here. Do you agree sitting him this long? In this magnitude of a game as Rostov gets blocked. He's been sitting for a long time. Well, you still have the lead, and that's the key. Okay. I mean, this game is very manageable, very under control, and it's at a pace that's sustainable for Western Kentucky. We saw it last night. It's a chess match down at the end. Ray Harper's pretty good in that situation. Rostov swings it back out to Brook. Brook on the drive. The leaner draws the foul and counted. And Jamal Crook. Finally gets one to fall. Remember Jamal Crook, who was struggling with his jump shot? How do you fix that? You put the ball on the floor, and you go to the basket, and you create easier shots. That's how you get your confidence and get to the line. Six points. So he'll go to the free throw line. Coach, he had a huge steal and layup with 17 seconds left in the game against South Alabama in their first round game a couple of games ago in this tournament. Nice comeback win by the Hilltoppers. If you're just joining us, Western Kentucky looking for its fourth win in as many days to repeat as Sun Belt Conference tournament champs. He and Ray Harper have as close of a player coach relationship as you will ever see off the floor. They're like best of friends. And listen, Ray Harper doesn't let up on him. He's very hard on him in game situations. They have a wonderful relationship. Four-point game, and of course, hey, if you're not yelling at your point guard, you're not communicating with him, right? At some time. <laughs> and right there, Richard Pitino telling Derek Hill exactly what to do on this possession. Derek Hill will accept the on-ball screen and then watch him just flash to the basket. Tough shot and draws the foul. The poise and patience by Derek Hill will go to the free throw line. He made the biggest bucket of the game last night in that upset against Middle Tennessee State. Yeah, with 12 seconds to go, he had the ball in his hand. Very similar play to this one. He was able to convert last night. He's just tough. He's fearless. Still a walk-on, as he was last year. Eric Hill out of South Miami High School. Knocks down the first. Hey, Super Saturday on ESPN is Folks, one of the most exciting days, frankly, in college basketball on ESPN. Five games and three conference championship games. And one and three will deliver both ACC semifinals. And at six, it's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Next, the Big East Championship tips from Madison Square Garden at 8.30. And the Pac-12 Championship wraps up the day at 11. Super Saturday on ESPN, also on WatchESPN.com. Six seconds to go. Crook in a rush. Finds Harris. It'll count. And that's the end of the first half of play with the Hilltoppers leading by two points. And that's good news for Western Kentucky, especially 
in light of the fact that their leading scorer T.J. Price spent most of the first half on the bench with foul trouble. Two point ball game of the half right now we're going to send it to Chris Connor and Seth Greenberg for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Tonight this is your time. This is your moment and this is your opportunity. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. One of these two teams just 20 minutes away from a berth in the tournament. Welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, the Sun Belt Conference Championship here at the Summit Arena in Hot Springs, Arkansas, at Bayou against Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers looking for their fourth tournament berth in the last six years. Mark Jones chopping it up with Mark Adams. Coach T.J. Price, their top scorer, spent a lot of time at the bench in the first half. What's it all mean? Well, Western Kentucky still has a two-point lead. Ray Harper has managed that well. But look for FIU to really turn up the heat defensively. They've got to get out in the open court and create some easy baskets against the bigger defenders of Western Kentucky. FIU likes to turn up that pressure a little bit. Let's take a look at how Western Kentucky has a competitive edge brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Uh, no cogent numbers from the first half of play which of those numbers really jump off the page at you coach pretty simple 45 percent from the floor for western kentucky fiu far below that that's why fiu needs to create some easy baskets fiu looking for its first ever ncaa tournament berth it's enjoying their first winning a season in 13 years Tristina, the head coach in his first season Frank lost the handle, got it back. And Yurkovic with the rebound. The team's coming back with their starters to begin the second half. When Western Kentucky went to man to man in the first half, FIU didn't settle for jump shots. They really attacked off the bounce. Foul underneath as Frank missed the long ball. And fouls against the Hilltoppers. And Rostov, that's his first personal team first of the second half. And another foul call, this one against FIU. Legal screen set by Jerome Frank, his second person. Remember when Western Kentucky opened the game against man to man, they pounded it inside to George Fant early in the half. I think they'll start that way again. You can see what they run here. It's Price off the screen. Two-man game with Fenn and Price. There's the pick and roll. Fenn couldn't finish. That's textbook Western Kentucky offense. That's what they like to do. They like to get Fenn, T.J. Price, a little two-game on the right-hand side. It's Derek Hill back the other way. He's been quiet offensively tonight after that 16-point performance last night in the upset win against Middle Tennessee State. Tymel Murphy is the guy to fear. Number 15 in white. Frank with the long jumper way off again. That was a wide right. The FIU basketball underneath. Frank, a 33% three-point shooter. Just three of 12 last night and struggling here. One of six today. If it's Smith shooting that shot, I'm all for it. But otherwise, you're going to shoot yourself right out of it. up and a quick turnaround and Fant knocks it down. Two possessions, two touches for Fant inside. That's smart basketball. That now was seven in the game. Here's Murphy. Smith refuses the ball screen. Whistle and an offensive foul call against Malik Smith. So Fant doing it at both ends, coach. Well, Fant is so active inside. He's a big, strong guy. He moves his feet defensively. He always has good vision. This team is well-schooled defensively. Well, Fant has been a real key component of what they do at both ends of the floor, starting his last 43 games that he's played. Got a three-on-two here on the press break. I'm not sure that Fant wanted to pass that, but it worked out pretty good for them. Rostov with the bucket. He'll take the assist. <laughs> well, Coach Harper talked earlier about not only 
breaking that full court pressure that FIU puts on you, but making them pay, Coach. Why? Uh, and that's the whole key. You just can't be a, a team that wants to break the press. You've got to score against the press. That's critical. Murphy with a nice dime. A little bit low, though. And a nice finish underneath by Frank. That's where Jerome Frank can really make a difference for this team. Go down inside, do a little bit of that dirty work. Six points for him. Back to a six-point game. Whistle and a foul. Foul is going to go against Derek Hill. That's his first person. Talked about Hill, a walk on last year and a walk on again this year. Has started at point guard and owning that starting job and out of South Miami High School. Jamal Crook at the free throw line, a 72% foul shooter on the season. Louisville kid, what a shock his favorite player is. Rajon Rondo? There you go, buddy. <laughs> I cheated. I kind of knew you'd get that. You know, I just had a feeling you'd get that. Missed 11 games this year with a broken foot. Averages 12.2 points per. Western Kentucky looking for its fourth consecutive win in four days, duplicating perhaps what they did a season ago on their way to the NCAA tournament. No team over the last 17 years of conference tournament play has won four consecutive games in four days, two consecutive years. Western Kentucky did it last year, and now they're in the same spot this year again with Ray Harper. Five-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Hill draws the foul on Crook. Nice little battle, Coach, between these two point guards going at each other a little bit. Yeah, with Derek Hill, sometimes the best defense just grab him. Uh, <laughs> it's the only way you're going to slow him down. When we came into the arena last night, we just watched the games. We weren't necessarily familiar with, especially with FIU. And we both looked at each other. Who's that number one? Who's that kid? He turned out to be the walk-on, and both of us felt like he might be the best player on the floor. Kermit Davis said he was the best player on the floor. He was last night. Fent. Comes up with the loose ball. Here's Price in a rush. Rosto faked. He didn't need to. He was right at the bucket. Big guy brought it down. That's a cardinal sin right there and got stripped. Back out to Hill. Little two-man game. Lee Smith. Boy, since knocking down those two early threes, Coach, he struggled. How does he get going again? He's got to take the ball to the basket. They're settling for jump shots right now. How does scores get it going? They get to the free throw line by wanting the bump. Smith going to launch away again, and this time finds the bottom of the net, undaunted. Malik Smith cuts it to a two-point game. The shortest memory in college basketball, <laughs> that kid. He doesn't care. If he misses shots, he's just going to keep shooting. That swings it around to Price weak side. Whistle and a foul underneath. That's going to go against FIU. One of these two teams just 15 50 away from a berth in the NCAA tournament. ESPN Bracketology Special presented by Staples. Sunday at 7. Two point ball game. The Hilltoppers leading. Their future so bright, yes, you got to wear sunglasses, coach, as we go inside the play. This is what it's like to coach big guys. Keep the ball up. Keep it up. Keep it up. He brings it right down. And what does that do? Allows the defenders to go slap it right out of his hands. That's Derek Hill level at about 5'8". And when big guys play 5'8", that's a problem. But he's got a big upside. He's got good hands. He runs the floor well. Lex Rostov is going to be a good player and has done some good things in this basketball game, but you got to keep the ball up when you catch it high, finish it high. I'm Mark Jones, court signed along with Mark Adams, one of these two teams trying to earn a berth to the NCAA tournament. FIU last night knocked off the number one seed, Little Tennessee State. The Blue Raiders had a 17 game winning streak going. Feeling that he'll get a spot in the tournament. And what a big time move by George Fant inside. George Fant got away with a little bit of a hook right there with his left hand on the backside and just whipped right around the defender. Murphy. 
Leads Smith off that curl. And he throws it away. That's the tenth turnover of the game by FIU. And Western Kentucky has done a, a good job of going up against this full court pressure throughout the game. How much does that wear down a guy like Jamal Crook? You know, it could also wear down Derek Hill. Well, it's not like there's a lot of guys to back him up. <laughs> Great point. Fent wheels, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Wow. Watch George Fan. Watch his left upper body. Right there. Oh, yeah. See how he hooks him? He got away with the, the initial possession because it was so subtle. But that one was right out in front of the official. Didn't see the hook from this angle, but it clearly was an offensive foul. Under 15 minutes to go. There's the guy I'd like to see hunt a shot. Murphy there he gets is. it on the move. And now Western Kentucky looking for the push. They've got numbers. Look at that defensive transition. Just white jerseys getting back. Three ball by Harris is good. Brandon Harris, a 32% three ball shooter, knocks it down and makes it a seven point game. Six one junior trying to give his team a little bit of breathing room. Back with more on the other side. Chris Cotter in the studio with the Sports Center right now. According to sources, Anquan Bolden was traded from the Ravens to the 49ers today. It's interesting, a Super Bowl opponent for a sixth round pick. And Percy Harvin goes from Minnesota to Seattle for the Seahawks' first round pick this year. So a couple of big trades in the NFL and the Southern Conference Finals right now over on ESPN2. Got a three-pointer here from Chris Cherapowitz. And Davidson right now has the lead over College at Charleston coming up on ESPN. Nine o'clock tip. Matthew Delvadova and St. Mary's against Gonzaga. The West Coast Finals again. Mark. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. Back here Western Kentucky with the lead. Coach Harper looking on this team up by seven and George Fent, their main offensive guy so far, but some subtleties in what he does on the block. Watch the good play on the left as he wraps with his left upper arm right there. He hooks the defender and he gets around and goes right to the basket. Now watch on the baseline does the same thing, but watch how pronounced the hook is right there as he hooks around the defender and he's called for the offensive foul there. It's the good and the bad of it. Smith off the screen. Back out to Hill. Murphy. Boy, how'd that pass get through? Bell got blocked. Loose ball out of bounds. And it's Western, pardon me, FIU basketball. Well, what a night for the Patino family. <laughs> Richard Patino playing for at 30 years old as a head coach playing for his first conference championship and at a program that had 13 consecutive losing seasons. And he's not going to be happy with that turnover but for the fact that the Hilltoppers gave it right back when Crook stepped out of bounds. Last night it was all over Twitter that his dad was going to come watch yeah. his son down here compete for a conference championship. What a season a team that was picked to finish. 10th out of 11 teams in the Sun Belt. They've never been to the finals in the Sun Belt Conference before. First winning season in 13 years. Most conference wins 11 since joining the Sun Belt Conference. As we take a look at tonight's fresh take brought to you by Subway. Fathers and sons. I rattled off about four of them and I, I got stuck after that. Well, there's the John Thompsons. Okay. Pat and Bob Knight, Ray and Joey Meyer, nice. Gene and Murray Bartow. Okay. Clean Gene. There's the list. Homer Stop. and Scott Drew, Dick and Tony Bennett, Henry and Mo Iba. It's going back to Jeff, the old school Jeff right there. Jeff. Dan and Don Monson. I've coached against both of them. It was a disaster both times. <laughs> but never in the same tournament have no. they coached at the same time. It would be first if FIU wins today. Frank underneath. Nice fake. Got the layup. And the lead is down to five. 
Well, I like Louisville's chances to get in the NCAA. Yeah, they, they, they have to tell you that right now. Good. I think that's, yeah. I don't think they're too, too concerned about the bubble. Won the Big East tournament last season. But Patino's an interesting guy. I think, you know, in practice, his economy of language is such a great teacher, and I see that in Richard as well. Loose ball. And they're going to call a foul against Murphy. You know, the other thing is the brutal honesty of father and son. Watching Richard in practice, he talks to his players. It's in measured tones. He doesn't scream, but he has economy of language. He lets them know, there it is right there. He's letting them know exactly what he expects. And he has high accountability factor. Somebody's going to have to be accountable for letting Harris slip open for three. The lead back up to eight now. Under 13 minutes to go in a berth in the NCAA tournament. An automatic bid on the line. Bell on the drive. What a reverse move by Cameron Bell. Only known as a big physical rebounder right there. Athleticism showcased. DJ Price on the drive. Got blocked out of bounds. And that's going to be FIU basketball. But one more look at Cam Bell. Cameron Bell, versatile. He can play the one, two, three, and four spots. And there you see his ability to be a, a one guard taking to the basket. It's one of only three returning scholarship players FIU has this year. Which makes the story even more amazing. There's Smith coming off the screen. Malik starting to light it up. Did you see him kick his foot out a little bit right there? <laughs> trying to draw a little contact by the foul. Smart kick. For that four-point play, the lead down to three. First cross court to Caspar. Fant wants it. Well, he's working hard. You got to reward him, right? If he's posted like that. Clean. There it is. Good defense. Bad pass too as Price turns it over. And Bell. And Patino ends up catching the pass. Murphy wasn't expecting it. Critical turnover in a low possession game. Time out on the floor. When we come back, we'll look at the significant impact and the contribution of the mid majors. That on the other side. Three point lead under 12 minutes to go. Hey, March Madness needed extra time in Nashville on Saturday, the OVC championship game. Ron Johnson tied the game against at the end of regulation against Murray State and then in overtime Murray State was unable to convert on a desperation attempt and the former Atlantic Sun champ Belmont wins it 70 to 68 and the 2013 OVC tournament champs as we look at the tickets punched so far what do you make of Creighton another quote unquote mid major Creighton is playing their best basketball of the season right now. They're playing in hyperdrive. They're getting up and down the floor. Doug McDermott, such a dangerous player in the paint from three and from mid range. And there's an offensive foul. The defense by Hill to draw the foul. And what about Florida Gulf Coast? The Eagles, Andy Enfield, head coach, doing a nice job there in his second year. Little push off right there. And the Florida Gulf Coast, they knocked off Miami before Miami went on that long winning streak. But Belmont be a good Murray State to Isaiah Canning. He'll be in the NBA. You'll be seeing him pretty soon. Yep. Hill on the drive. Nice feed. Well, shut down quickly on Cam Bell. He kicked it out. Active hands again by the Hilltoppers. FIU almost took it back. Three-point ball game, 11.22 to go. Western Kentucky looking for its fourth consecutive win in as many days. You know, Mark, with Belmont winning the OVC, a lot of people don't know that the OVC has won an NCAA tournament game the last four years in a row. One of those was Moorhead State knocking off Rick Pitino in Louisville in 2010 with Kenneth Fareed, who's now with the Denver Nuggets. Oh, the minimal. Whistle and a foul. Boy, uh, you can see the agonizing. Yeah. Dad slash coach. Well, you can't even enjoy the game when you're watching. Is that the way it goes? When you're a parent, <laughs> you can't. I know that for a fact. 
All you do is just try to survive the experience. I hope your son wins. That's four fouls now on Bell. And kicks it out to Harris. Harris has knocked down some very timely three-pointers. They go inside defend. Double teamed. Back out to Harris for three. Fent with the putback good. Boy, he knocked his own man out of the way to get it. The reason why he got the offensive glass, three defenders converged on him, and he passed it out, which forced the defense to react, which left him a wide-open avenue to the offensive glass. He's got 11 in the ballgame, approaching 10 minutes to go. Eric Hill on the dish. Whistle. And a foul called against Western Kentucky. That's against T.J. Price. That's going to be his third personal foul. Coach, you leave him in? I mean, he sat for most of a good part of the later part of the first half with fouls. I'm leaving him in for a while and then give him a blow before the next TV timeout. But you know what? I sure would attack him hard. And Richard Patino knows that. They're going to go right after Price. And with Murphy, perhaps, their leading score. Frank got a fortuitous roll. And it falls. Frank, a 33% three ball shooter, makes it a two point game. He's got 11. The foul called against FIU. That's against Frank. That's his third. And the Hilltoppers now will go to the free throw line and shoot the bonus the rest of the way with 10 19 to go. Now Frank, one of those St. Anthony's guys, played for Bob Hurley. That's one thing that Richard Patino has put a premium on. Bring guys in that understand how to win. Ty Mel Murphy as well played at South Plains. Played with Marshall Henderson. Now at Ole Miss. Might be uh, the most demonstrative player in all of college basketball this year. And I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> I'm not certain I do. <laughs> I'm just trying to be diplomatic here. I'd, I'd go to an early grave, I think, maybe coaching him. I'm not sure. We can look up demonstrative and interpret it that definition any way you want, folks. I'm kind of old school, <laughs> you know. You know, all the guys that are waving their threes and everything every time they make a three. I mean, act like you've been there before. Crook knocks down the first of two foul shots, a 72% free throw shooter on the season. Which explains why I'm sitting next to you now, Mark. <laughs> I couldn't survive now. Crook makes two. Just when it looked like the Hilltoppers were going to be able to put FIU away, they had to lead up to eight points. The Panthers battling back. Now we're talking about a team that's played from behind all year in FIU. They're picked for 10th out of 11 teams in the Sun Belt. Boy, you can call it a pass, I guess. <laughs> Tola Okamola Lafe got the bucket. And nobody blocked off. We saw it last night, FIU and Western Kentucky. FIU took every knockout punch throughout that basketball game and just found a way to win at the end. They're on a similar path here tonight. Price and Fenn on the same side of the floor. Fenn misses the jump hook. And now FIU with a chance to tie it up. Murphy down to Hill. They're going to run a little offense. Backdoor pass a little bit low. Whistle and a foul going to go against FIU and Murphy. Well, we talked about Middle Tennessee, 17-game winning streak snapped last night by FIU, but their strength of schedule, 135, their tournament resume, their RPI at 28, defeated Ole Miss. But their non-conference schedule was ninth in the country. Right. 28 wins. They won 17 in a row. They had the second best road record in the country. They knocked off Ole Miss. Okay, so their bad loss, they lost to FIU. Well, where's FIU? They're a team that continued to get better and better throughout the season. I think Middle Tennessee is in. Now, I know Joe Lenardi right now disagrees, but here's the key. Who's going to win the conference tournaments? Right. If the favorites continue to win the conference tournaments, then there's not going to be those bumps at the bubble teams. And that's typically what happens throughout championship week, that more times than not, your better teams end up winning their conference tournament. You look at uh, some Middle Tennessee's losses. Their three of their four regular season losses were to conference champions. I'd say they got a great shot at getting in, should be in. Murphy chasing down the loose ball, not in time. It'll be Western Kentucky basketball coming back the other way. 
And Murphy tried to call a timeout as he was flying out of bounds. You can't do that anymore. Once upon a time, just a few years ago, you could do that. Now you have to have both feet in bounds. You like the rule change? Oh, I love it. Yeah. There's only one other rule change I'd like to see. What's that? And that's the 10 second rule in college basketball. You cannot call a timeout to save your team of losing possession. Price gets it over in time. Under nine minutes to go. Western Kentucky looking for its 20th win of the season. It would be the one that would put them in the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in the last six seasons. Good defense out front by Hill. And the ball pressure ends up forcing another turnover. As we look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology, first four out and last four in. And look at the first four out according to Joe. Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, Ole Miss, and Baylor. There's a lot of folks in the state of Tennessee right now yeah. wringing their hands and <laughs> hoping good things happen on Selection Sunday. And Conzo Martin, his ball clubs played very good Boy. basketball here coming down the stretch. Won eight of their last nine. Went at home against Missouri a few days ago. His team really peaking at the right time. Another late season run. Nice feed inside by Hill. Hill makes everybody better on the floor. He has such great vision. We talked before the game. He said being an option quarterback in football taught him how to see everything in basketball. Man, does he see it. He kicks it out to Harris. Price on the move. Rebound. And FIU now with a chance to take the lead with under eight minutes to go. They battle back from an eight-point deficit. And that eight-point deficit, Coach, it, it felt like a lot more because it was such a half-court game at the time. Yeah, tempo was controlled, but now Derrick Hill starting to exert his will off the bounce. Hill refuses the ball screen. Had it swatted away by Fenn and kept in bounds by Fenn. Well, Fenn really reacted well. Hill tried to bait him a little pass fake. And Western Kentucky calls timeout. Coach Harper has three remaining. Blind resumes. Uh, you try and guess who they are? No, we're going to find out who I'm going to pick here. <laughs> schedule you strength. Take? Let's you see choose? here. Well, schedule strength middle team. We got the BPI rank, so I like that right there. And then we go down to RPI rank. We've got right there. But you know what? What I like the best is the top. There's five games right there against the top 50 and two and three against those teams. I like the middle team. No guesses. I like the middle team. Show me. LaSalle. Wow. The LaSalle Explorers right there. John Janini. Of the A-10, St. Mary's on the left coming up next against Gonzaga and Middle Tennessee. So you put a little more value and premium on the record against RPI top 50s? And that's the Why? key. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. But I think you should be rewarded when you go on the road. And listen, here's the other thing. From a scheduling perspective, if you're a Power 6 team, you play 80 to 90% of your games at home or a neutral site in non-conference play. The RPI and the BPI, they're wonderful tools. The BPI is better, by the way. The bottom line is, the way the scheduling is set up in non-conference, Power 6 teams have every advantage in the world to get the NCAA tournament. Whistling a foul against the Panthers and Derek Hill. Hilltoppers will go to the free throw line when we come back. It's a one-point game, 7-20 away from a tournament berth. Cotter in studio. SoCo Finals over on the Deuce in Asheville, which is beautiful this time of year. Beautiful for Davidson as well. Damon Brooks jump hook here. He has 22 on the day in the lane, and it's looking like Davidson might advance up by 14 with about six minutes left to go. Women's college basketball tournament time. Notre Dame beat Louisville earlier in the day. Right now over on ESPNU, it's Connecticut with the lead over Syracuse. Those two teams look like they may face off again for the third time this year. The Irish won both those games. And Kelly Olynyk coming up at the top of the hour in about 25 minutes time. West Coast Conference Finals, St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, Chris. And a look at our Wooden Player of the Year Award favorites. Uh, Coach, uh, who's your pick of the five here? I mean, some great candidates. Look, here's two guys everybody's talking about, Oladipo and Burke. But look at the three guys in the middle. Olenek, the most improved big man in the country, and the reason why Gonzaga could be a Final Four team. You got Nate Walters of South Dakota State, who's a guy kind of like John Stockton. He can get by defenders, got great vision, he's got, got good size for a collegiate guard. One of the all-time leading scorers in South Dakota State history is the all-time leading scorer. And then Dungeon Dermott. He's my player of the year 
because even against the Power Six teams, he averaged over 25 points per game, wow. shot over 50% against the Power Six, and they were 5-0 and against the Big Ten over the last two years. That's on the I kick a plug. Play against uh, St. Mary's a couple of weeks ago. A prolific score playing for his father. Brook, meanwhile, knocks down the first foul shot. Jamal Brook, a 72% free throw shooter on the season. One for two, a whistle and a foul going to be called underneath against FIU. Akumalafe is going to be whistled for the foul. That's his third. 6'6 six, six senior out of El Paso. And that puts Vance on the free throw line. Toro Akumalafe, he definitely throws his body around out there. I mean, he's a guy that leaves it all out there. He's one of those blue collar guys. I like the way he just gets in there and just kind of a little bit nasty about things. Fant makes the first of two. George Fant, third team all Sun Belt Conference this year. Having a much better night tonight than he did last night when he only had five and three against Arkansas State. And Ray Harper said that if George Fant doesn't play well, there's no way Western Kentucky can beat FIU. And now Western Kentucky goes to their 3 2 zone. Hill rebounded. Great effort by Pomalato. Jump shot off the mark by Smith. And back comes Western Kentucky. You know, we're also at a point now where three games in three days, days, four games in four days. You know, this is where jump shots, jump shots start becoming short all the time. Tired legs. Which of these teams has the advantage in terms of their depth and using more bodies, or does anyone? I think Western Kentucky is just physically stronger. Off the three ball by Price. There's Malik Smith. Had it partially blocked. Great defensive effort. And Price in a hurry the other way. And now they're going to run a little offense. Crook. A couple of empty possessions for both teams. As Cameron Bell gets set to check in for Richard Patino. A great recovery by Hill. 15 on the shot clock. Back to Crook. Well, Western Kentucky has run nothing on this possession. They finally get into a set. Fan knocks down the mid range. Great patience pays off. And the lead up to six. Pick and pop right there. Well executed. Used a lot of clock. Richard Patino, the first year head coach for FIU, calls timeout. Well, Championship Week is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, which on Watch ESPN app or at watchespn.com. Great app to have on your laptop, iPhone, iPad. Coach, as much time as we spend in airports, uh, got to be able to keep up, right? It's a necessity. I'm, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I'm addicted to pick and pop, too. Look at Jamal Crook. He drags two defenders with him, which leaves George Fant wide open. You either pick and roll or you pick and pop. You read the defense, and Fant went to the open wood area. There's a look at the rich history for the Hilltoppers. 42 conference championships, 40 seasons with 20 or more wins. A tournament berth would be their fourth in the last six seasons. See what FIU runs coming out of the timeout. Bell checking in. We've got to think Malik Smith is a guy that the defense of Western Kentucky will focus on. He's the big shot maker for this team. Bell with the floater. Got it. Nice. A crucial basket at this juncture of the game. Well, nothing easy coming. Both teams... Uh, Forced to run their half court. Fan goes quick with it. They kept it alive, and the Hilltoppers with another possession. Harris. Wide open three. Got it. Another pivotal three ball by Brandon Harris. Well, the right side of the zone just got lost. Lead ballooning up to seven. 
with four and a half minutes to go. Bell, another floater, another bucket. And Bell. He is so under control when he gets to the paint. A little two foot jump stop, just goes straight up. Can't draw a charge on him. He's got 11 now. Brooke walked with it out front. Dragged his pivot foot. And Harper wants to talk it over with him. Just a little bit. It's like a tennis unforced error right there. Substitution. Western Kentucky. Brooke is going to get a little breather here. Kaspar comes in for him. Six foot sophomore out of Istanbul, Turkey. This is part of that relationship right here we talked about. Ray Harper talking to his point guard, trying to settle him down. He'll bring him back in under the TV timeout. There's Bell, who's knocked down the last couple of buckets for the Panthers. Back out to Hill. Smith, a deep three. Hill, the smallest guy on the floor with the rebound, in amongst the trees, gets it to go. That's the type of temerity and toughness that he plays with four points in the game. Well, when you said it, just tough. Number one, Derek Hill. Back to a three-point game, three and a half to go. Two settling in. Gaspar running the point with Crook on the bench. Harris, another three ball. This one off the mark. And a chance for FIU to cut it to one or tie it with a three. Bell wheeling and couldn't finish, got right to the basket. Well, that's the first time we've seen Western Kentucky and their transition defense exposed. Cameron Bell got all the way to the rim. As you mentioned, it's the fourth game for Western Kentucky, the third game in as many nights for FIU. Those legs get a little wobbly with fatigue beginning to set in. And here's what's at stake. Thank you for you. I'm looking for a little history. Here's what happened last year in Western Kentucky. Facing North Texas. Tony Mitchell was getting it done for the number one seed, but then the Hilltoppers rallied late. And at the end, Van with a baseline jumper. An improbable, almost implausible story as the Hilltoppers ran the table in four days to win the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Now Western Kentucky, there you see six out of the last seven years, excuse me, three out of the last six years. And Western Kentucky last season was just an amazing story. This was a team that was dead and buried. Their coach was fired. Ray Harper takes over. He challenges his team down 30 in the locker room in January. Our goal, forget about the scoreboard. Let's be the toughest team every night. And they built on that and built on that until they came here and won in Hot Springs, Arkansas to be the Sun Belt Conference champions. Four games and four nights by Ray Harper. They're trying to do it again. Harper, the former head coach at Kentucky Wesleyan and Oklahoma City University won two national titles at both places, Division II schools. And of course, Ty Rogers, remember that big shot, yeah. knocking off Drake in the NCAA tournament? Under three minutes to go. Bill Toppers with two timeouts remaining. FIU with one. Crook checks back into the ball game. They throw it into the backcourt. Hill's going to really turn up the heat. He got a turnover on Crook the last time. Nice to Fan. They double team Fan. They repost it to him. Strong move. A man's move inside by George Fan. And the local product out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, has 17 points and 12 rebounds in the biggest game of the year for the Hilltoppers. That shot. Boy, that was a heat check for sure. Bell, a little indiscretion. His team up by down by five, and that's going to be a block that time against Derrick Hill. FIU looking for a big comeback with an uphill climb with 2.19 to go. One of these teams is going to the big dance. Chris Cotter in studio, the Colonial Finals. Northeastern making a comeback here. Rico Peck with the lay-in after the miss right there, the putback, and it's an, it's a 12-point lead right now. Can the Dukes hang on to punch their tickets? Elias Harris 
And Gonzaga coming up next. St. Mary's once again in the West Coast Conference Finals about 12 minutes from now right here on ESPN. Mark. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Here's a look at championship week by the numbers. 225 men's and women's games on ESPN Networks. 40 tickets punched. 27 conferences represented. And this is nirvana for basketball fans. As Crook misses the first of two, he's a 72% foul shoot. Short. That's why George Fant is so critical coming down the stretch, because big guys doesn't matter. We've got a big workhorse down low. Just feed him, give him the basketball, let him go to war. Is that the key for them closing this thing out now with a six-point lead? I think it is. Play inside-out basketball. What does FIU have to do to overcome this deficit? Attack. Spread the defense. They're in man-to-man -man now. Attack off the dribble. Lee Smith, well guarded by Harris. Bell handling. Whistle and a foul. That's going to go against Fent. One more look at Fent's work in the post. Watch him inside. He gives it up, and then watch what he does. He reposts inside. That's why he's successful. Ball goes outside, goes to inside, and he reposts. That's well executed. Meanwhile, well, FIU has an opportunity to chop this down to four with the clock stopped. Cameron Bell at the foul line, an 81% free throw shooter. He's had a couple of big buckets for them here in the second half. 15 points, four rebounds in that upset against Middle Tennessee. But he misses the front end of the bonus. Well, that's why early games when you can rest your guys, if you can get a big lead, it's just so critical because it pays off on the last day of the tournament. Interesting. It was uh, Western Kentucky that had the late game actually last night against Arkansas State. FIU played the first game against. Middle Tennessee. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Time to get busy. Crook, nice handle. The floater goes. Through his legs. Wow. Not sure he meant to do it that way, but it turned out well. Bell fouled underneath. Stops the clock with 117 to go. One more look at the handle by Jamal Crook. This is why you do all those ball handling drills. Look at that. He did mean to do it. And looked very poised doing it, Coach. Look with 14 points. I'm feeling a little sports center right there. <laughs> you feeling it? We, hashtag SC Top 10. There you go. That's how it goes. Bell, meanwhile, countering with the free throw. I don't think it's a one. But I think it's like a five it's to about eight seed. Eight. <laughs> don't you think so? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I, I might go eight to ten, but eight still to, a okay, great move. Right. Bell knocks down both. Now, now watch this now. I want to look at that. Wow, that's pretty sweet. That's at least a five. Power steering <laughs> and power brakes by Jamal Crook. That's nice. I like that. Forced to pick up his dribble. Harris on the press break. And wise move to pull it out, right, Coach? Really is. That's smart. Break pressure. Use shot clock. Boy, look at Hill just dogging Crook out front. Under a minute to go. Western Kentucky, 53 seconds away, but an offensive foul called. That's going to go against Price. Check that. It's going to be against Rostov. Yeah, I, I think Ray Harper just wanted T.J. Price to go one-on-one -on -one and not even bring another defender up. That's what he's telling Rostov right there, to just stay on the baseline. Let T.J. Price make the play. They run that 1-4 in big game situation. Six-point deficit. Are you looking at a two, or do you go for a three here? What's the thinking? Off the dribble, get in the paint. If you get a three off and inside out, that's fine. Bell got stripped, but a foul called. And it looks like they're going to say it's on the shot. Foul is going to go against Jamal Crook, his third. Now, if the ball's coming up for the shot, it can be down his hip, but if it's coming up, boy, that looked like a clean ball right there. Ooh. I don't dispute that the, the, the foul, the phantom foul, was on the shot because the ball was coming up to the shooting pocket, but that looked like all ball. Nonetheless, Cameron Bell, an 81% foul shooter at the line. Makes the first. Tino family here tonight. Dad 
crowd watching in attendance as well. It's a four point game. And here comes the full court pressure. Trap hard. Brooke gets it back to Price. Good poise to break the press. And an offensive foul. I'm not so sure about that one. Hill really sold it well. Let's take another look. Does he establish defensive position? And there's contact there, but wow. Hill did sell. He sold it pretty sold good. It really well. If it was, it was sold. And now a chance for FIU to pull to within two. Still a lot of time remaining. A two or a three here. What do you do? Western Kentucky goes two, three zone. They could be vulnerable from behind the arc on inside out. There's Frank. Frank with the jumper. Rattles in. And it's a two-point game. So the offensive foul call against Crook turns into a bucket at the other end for FIU. And it's down to a two-point game, but FIU is out of timeouts. Watch how the defenders all come out on shooters trying to take away the three, and Frank is wide open in that dead space of the zone and knocks down a shot. Smart basketball by FIU. I mean, here you're playing basically for overtime. You may get the luxury of the win, but when you can get a two and cut the lead in half, that's smart basketball right there. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky coach has two timeouts remaining. Both teams are shooting the double bonus, shooting two free throws on a foul. If now, I'm what's what's the thinking now if you're Western Kentucky? You got the ball. You're coming back the other way. You know you're going to face that full court press. What are you doing? Western Kentucky, obviously, get the ball and bounce, and then and then protect the basketball. But conversely. If I'm Richard Patino right now, I'm giving my team about 10 seconds to trap as hard as they can to get the steal. And I'm telling them, look, trap as hard as you have to, to get the basketball and hope the official swallows the whistle. If you got to foul a little bit to get it, go ahead and foul because it'll stop the clock anyway. But I'm going to sell out on the trap to try to get the steal. To see who the Hilltoppers come back into the game with. Their best free throw shooter is actually the big man Rosto, but he's not on the floor right now. One thing Ray Harper does a good job of in full court out of bounds plays, typically there's always one flyer. There's a deep opportunity for an easy score. He likes to spread the floor that way. It gets everybody else in space to move. Keep in mind, Crook can run the baseline. It's after a made bucket. And he uses the baseline, gets it into Price. And they tried to get the trap, as you said. They commit the foul, sending Crook to the foul line for two. So if he makes two free throws here, he makes it a two-possession game for FIU. That was a really good full court out of bounds. You had three guys moving in unison, screening, coming to the ball, and they sent Fant deep, which drug another defender out of that half court. Louisville coach Rick Patino watching his son's team from the stands. Crook six of nine today. From the foul line. Like that seven to ten and a big make. This next one is really huge because it makes it a two possession game. So 23.6, a ton of time, especially when you've got a Derrick Hill that can go coast to coast in four seconds or less. Brooke knocks down both. It's a four point lead. Malik Smith, the best three-point shooter on the floor for FIU. And the zone gets set. And it's going to be a kick ball. It's 16.8 to go. You're going for a, a three here or a two, or does it matter at this point? Either one, because a two will do you just as good. You're playing for overtime here is really what you're doing. You're trying to squeeze four points out of the next 16 seconds. Well inbound. It had Frank for a quick moment. Point guard Hill missing off the backboard. And that might just do it. They're going to try and dribble it out. Crook. They can't catch him. You got a foul. They finally do. And with 5.7 seconds to go, the Hilltoppers will shoot a couple of free throws and are 5.7 away from winning four games in a row and making a repeat trip to the NCAA tournament. A four shot right there, and Jamal Crook just breaks away. 
And now Western Kentucky for the first time in at least 17 years can win back-to-back -back conference championships after winning four games in four days in two years. Well, last year, Ray Harper took over from Ken McDonald after he was dismissed first as the interim and then the full-time head coach. Won four games in four days here at the conference tournament. And who would have thought that they would do it again? The remix back in effect. Five-point lead after... Crook knocked down the first foul shot. This one is cooked, glazed, and about to be sliced. The Hilltoppers are almost going to punch their ticket. It's a two-point game. They got a foul quick. And that's it. It's over. Western Kentucky, the Sun Belt Conference Tournament champs. The big fella, George Fant, leading the way. Brooks sealing the deal. 65-63, the final score. The Hilltoppers win it. Right now, we're going to send you to Las Vegas and the West Coast Conference Championship. For Mark Adams, I'm Mark Jones. So long. Let's go to Las Vegas. You're watching Championship.